And I remember I had 100 bob, my last 100 shillings. Now after that 100 bob, I'd have had to maybe even walk home. <laughs> so I get the job and later on I asked my boss why he chose me and he told me I was just confident. There, there are many no's as you go through life that you're yeah. going to get. So you can't let it put you down. Yeah. yeah, just learn why you didn't get the job and then make sure you're prepared well for the next one. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Financially Incorrect. I am your host, Barack. This is a podcast sponsored by FX Pesa. We're getting closer and closer to the million, million mark. I feel like I should say that differently. Like the million educated mark yeah for fx pesa we're getting closer and closer to it thanks to everyone who's listening to this podcast um i should i, I should read like a comment or two that are on youtube that's probably like the three comments that exist there anyway <laughs> but um i think everyone sort of just says oh you know this is great content um thanks for thanks for for this and all the different i guess things that they're tips and stuff that they're picking up from here so that's really great. And then the, 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 the next guest that they want on here, um, we have some fantastic guests coming up. Um, but anyone else that you'd want, to, you'd want us to interview, you'd want us to talk to, find out about their money journey and how they make their money and whether it's actually there, please do let, let us know. Um, today I've been told we need to talk to Caliph Cairo. So <laughs> we'll look for him and see if, and see if that happens. Today, though, I have Anne Mohia with me on set. She is an entrepreneur, and she told me to say she's an unprepared. No, I think it's for this particular podcast. An unprepared <laughs> entrepreneur. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> How are you? I'm well, Barack. Yeah? How are you? I'm okay. She said she's, she's watched a couple of our episodes, and her favorite episode is, is Jay Take a Jay Take a Pick, yes. Yeah. I, I felt like it was uh, very authentic. I yeah. enjoyed that show. Yeah. Mm. Did you feel like you're richer or, or, or poorer, or did you compare yourself to him at all? Um, it felt relatable. Not do you I'm ever really compare different. yourself to people, actually, like money? Do you see people and compare yourself? No, no, not really. No? We are, we are all on different paths. Yeah. Um, when I consume content on social media, I like to consume content that, that builds me, mm -hmm. not really takes away joy yeah. because comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't know that I can honestly say that I don't compare yeah. myself I, I, <laughs> to anyone. I, I mean, sometimes know. I'm envious. Yeah. You know, you're like, damn, they're doing so well. But no, um, mine is comparison. It's, Com <laughs> <laughs> it's, not envy. it's just like, um, like, yeah, like what's happening here? You yeah. Know, like, anyway, but more, I guess more frivolous than anything else. I am substantial, though. I'm not a purely, um, uh, what do you call it, superficial um, human oh, being. Oh, I see. But okay, right. So... We're getting to, into, into your journey, into entrepreneurship, um, mm -hmm. and I guess how you even got there. You told me, before we started this conversation, you told me that you've lost all your money at least <laughs> once before. So more I'm, than I'm, once. More, or more than <laughs> once, yeah. So looking forward to hear that story. Yeah. Um, but maybe you can tell us a bit about what you do now. All right. Um, I am an entrepreneur. I'm in the tech space. I run a company, Linity Dynamics Africa. Mm -hmm. We sell ERP software solutions. To what is ERP? Software what is solution? ERP? Yeah. Yeah. It's basically software that helps you run and manage your business. And our target market is retail and distribution. So mm -hmm. it will basically help you purchase, mm -hmm. manage inventory movement, and sell to your customers without losing money or stock. Basically. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you so so do you sell other people's solutions or do you create your own solutions that you sell? Uh, interesting question. <laughs> so at the moment, I the company is a software reseller. Mm -hmm. So we sell already built okay. software solutions that make sense for this market. Mm -hmm. um, I've tried to build my own. That's another story. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure we'll get to that. Yeah. But uh, at the moment, we are just reselling. Okay. Yeah. A question on uh, gender, the, I guess the gender dynamics within the tech space. Mm -hmm. um, I guess there's the generalization that there's fewer women than men in the tech space yeah is that a true representation of it uh yeah it's actually true yeah there are more men in tech than there are women mm -hmm. but the few women who are who are in tech mm -hmm. are are better 
software developers, sorry. I was waiting for a better. They are better software developers. They are just better. Yeah, they're better. They're better. Okay. Okay, interesting. Yeah, the reason I'm asking experience. that is because I was, I guess, in a conversation, I think it was earlier this weekend, we we're just talking about, I guess, the gender, the gender space and dynamics in the tech space and mm-hmm. trying to look at how, I guess, you can highlight um, what the difference is and the impact that that has in the industry as a whole and for girls sort of um, looking up and wanting to get into tech. So how did you get into tech, actually? <sighs> Good question. So I'm an accountant by profession. Okay. <laughs> I'm a CPAK. I've, I have about nine years employed experience. Mm-hmm. Um, how did I leave employment? I, I had an encounter with a... How do I put this? <laughs> is it X-rated? <laughs> or is it like, no, it's not or X-rated. Do you mean, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not X-rated. Um, just a bad boss. Let me just say he okay, was a bad okay. boss. Um, and my journey in employment was a bliss, I must say. Mm-hmm. I, I rose the ranks. It was... It came easy, mm-hmm. I would say. Mm-hmm. Until this point, I get a new job, report to my new job. Um, we are getting along six months in and things start to go south. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say at the, at, the, at, the, at the time, maybe I didn't know much about corporate politics. Mm-hmm. Today in the same position. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You'd have done things I'd, differently. I'd be able to manage him, but I, I was completely clueless and... I failed at it, uh, and it left me miserable. So what, what, what do you think he or she wanted, your boss? I wish I knew. <laughs> I, I mean, you're I saying you'd have done it differently now. <laughs> yeah. So, like, what, what do you think? Uh, just corporate politics, telling people what they want to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, at some point when you incorporate, hard work is not really what gets you there. It's mm-hmm. how well you play your politics. Mm-hmm. Um, and up to that point, hard work can get had gotten me, you know, up to that point. Yeah. And so when the politics came into play, I I was ill-equipped, I would say. Okay. Yeah. What's the straw that broke the camel's back? Like, what's the thing that happened that you were like, you know what, this employment, like, yeah, I'm done? Um, I mean, he was, he'd, he'd I don't want to make this about him, mm-hmm. but it, it got to a point where the job was really nice. Um, the company was prestigious. It's one of those places you go telling people, oh, I work at this and this place. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I loved the job. Mm-hmm. Hated the person I was reporting to. Mm-hmm. Um, so it got to a point where, yes, you're getting paid good money um, and you, you have, you know, you can say you work at, at this and that place, mm-hmm. but you're so miserable. You don't mm-hmm. even get to enjoy the money. Mm-hmm. And it just... It was a Monday morning, actually. I reported to work. I had not really considered resignation. Mm-hmm. I got to work and I was just like, this cannot be my life. I can't, I can't continue living like this. So I just, mm-hmm. I sat down, wrote my resignation letter. Resignation like right, right there, right, right there. Right there and sent it before I changed my mind. And did you resign in lieu of, of um, um, did you pay them in, in lieu of notice? Or no, I gave them you notice. Served, you served, you, so served, you served the yeah, notice? Yeah, I served my notice. Okay. Um, but the moment I, I sent that letter out, I was like, oh, shit. And you should have thought this through. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have like four questions I want to ask off of that. What, first one being, mm-hmm. you said that you are miserable to the point that you did not enjoy your money. Yeah. Explain to me how one cannot, how one, because money, I mean, like miserable, excited, like if I'm buying a car, mm-hmm. if I'm buying food, yeah. if I'm buying... Like how can you not enjoy money? What, what does that mean? Um, well, interesting question. I, what I mean is you, you're the first one to report to work. You're the last one to leave. Mm-hmm. Um, you get zero appreciation, um, zero support. Mm-hmm. Um, your boss is talking smack at you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just there's no joy, basically. So being able to buy or spend on whatever it is that you wanted does not make up for what you were not getting at no, work. No, 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 it wasn't. Okay. Um, well, when I rea- when I resigned, I was yeah. just like, oh, <laughs> maybe it was. <laughs> maybe it was. Yeah. But, so, 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 so did you have buyer's remorse after you resigned? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you could have taken it back. I did because um, I mean I 
I thank God I did though. Mm-hmm. I, I think I'm a better person uh, mm-hmm. for it. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in many aspects, as a person, um, how I am with my money today. Mm-hmm. Because then, I mean, there's a salary at the end of the month. Yeah. Uh, so you have this much to spend yeah. in 30 days. Yeah. <laughs> That's how yeah. you'd look at it. <laughs> yeah. So at the end of the month, no money left. Yeah. Um, no investments, really. Um, and... Yeah, I would say I would say now now when I look back mm-hmm. I I'm, I'm I'm I thank God I did. Mm-hmm. Then immediately especially immediately um I panicked because then how am I going to pay my bills? Yeah. How am I going to pay rent? You know, those yeah. those questions that come Yeah, into that come into your head immediately after. Yeah. And I want to ask you this because I haven't had anyone else I think who sat here and told me that they served notice. But I want to ask about the how the work relationship is during that month of serving <laughs> <laughs> of serving notice like what is it like are you it's, walking into work like whenever you feel like are you being called no, into no, no, hr no. or you yeah you're being you, you many people are calling you for handover and mm-hmm. stuff um i didn't want to burn bridges so mm-hmm. um and i it was it was hostile at first mm-hmm. but then i think after everything settled mm-hmm. it was just about the handover mm-hmm. um and then immediately after i was done with the handover then you know they allowed me to leave yeah yeah Okay, so I gave them a month, but yeah. you know, when I was done with the handover, I, it wasn't necessary to do the. Whole oh, month. so 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 they didn't, but they still paid you for that month. Yes. Oh, so they were like good. Yeah. Good. Um, I Solid. guess good in in that sense. <laughs> okay, I guess we've gone like quite far in that journey, but let me let me reel, reel us back in mm-hmm. and talk about um, I guess your 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 money philosophy. Like, how did you when you think if you think about it now, how did you come up with your money philosophy? And at what age were you when you were like, yeah, this is how I'm going to operate with money. and this Money is... philosophy. Yeah. What's how, that, Barack? Ma- money <laughs> philosophy in the sense of like how you spend, how you spend, how you spend your money, you know. Um, <sighs> because there must be something that's guiding it. Even, Ma- if, even if there's no guidance, it's still even no guidance. It's guidance. It's like I'm going to buy whatever I want whenever yeah. I want it. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I had that philosophy. Mm-hmm. Do I even have one right now? I don't think so. Yeah. Maybe I do. It's just not conscious. Conscious. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, maybe conscious. it's not conscious. Yeah. So, interesting. Um, I, I met a friend of mine a couple of years ago, and he asked me a question mm-hmm. that, I, that I remember often to mm-hmm. date. He asked me, Anne, at, at nine years old, what did you, like, what, what was your, what would you call, like, what do you want to be when you mm-hmm. grow up? Like, Back when you were nine, mm-hmm. how did that look like? Mm-hmm. Um, and I grew up in the village, mm-hmm. in a village called Gedongori mm-hmm. in Kiambu with mm-hmm. my grandmother. Um, and very humble beginnings. So mm-hmm. at nine, mm-hmm. I, I, just, I just needed food and a place to sleep, mm-hmm. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know. I, and, and probably the person you are aspiring to be is um, your neighbor your neighbor's family who mm-hmm. the parent maybe is a teacher and mm-hmm. sometimes they have sausages for breakfast mm. and and you you didn't have sausages <laughs> for breakfast <laughs> from where <laughs> yeah, yeah so at nine i i guess what i'm trying to say is i had reached um this point in my career that mm-hmm. to be honest and my nine-year-old self mm-hmm. could not envision mm. Pretty much. So when you were, when he was asking you that question, was it more of like uh, was he trying to get you to appreciate where you where you are right now? I think he, he wanted to find out like what were my dreams and aspirations mm-hmm. at nine years old, and your dreams are only as big as your perception, mm-hmm. you know, and your environment. So if your environment is limited, then mm-hmm. your dreams also would be limited. Would be limited. Um, <laughs> we had no steamer. No TV. Um, radio was on for like an hour in so the let evening. So let, let, let me stop you for a second there. <laughs> because I come from, from Western Kenya. And mm-hmm. in my shags, we had um, none of those. But it wasn't by choice. You know, like, <laughs> like, 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 yeah. the, like the government hadn't developed. <laughs> hadn't developed. Oh, I see. Hadn't developed the, 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 the area. The infrastructure wasn't there. So, uh-huh. you know, like... So it wasn't a question of, you know, the neighbor has it, is you not. So um, I guess my question to you is, um, is that the same for you or was it that you did not have the resources? We didn't have the to... resources. Okay. Yeah, we didn't have the resources. Okay. So radio is on for like an hour. 
max, yeah. like 30 minutes, um, so that and you preserve a, a, a the AM batteries, yeah. <laughs> so that they can last you like a month yeah. and stuff. So yeah. um, at nine, I didn't have big dreams. Mm -hmm. Maybe I did, but as big as my perception at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I'd gotten to a point in my career where I, I didn't think I'd ever get there, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I started working um, when I was 21. Mm -hmm. By this point, do you have your CPA? Yes. Okay, let's talk about how you get to, to, to the CPA classes. Okay. Yeah. Um, my dad is an accountant. Okay. Um, I was good at math. Mm -hmm. um, and so CPA it is. You went <laughs> after... after, after um, high school. After high school. You went straight to Yeah, CPA. so I, I do my CPAs. I, I go all the way up to K. Um, and then I, I'm craving some independence. Mm -hmm. So I move out at mm -hmm. 21. Right now, I'm just like... Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, I have a small job. I, my salary was like 6 Gs. Mm -hmm. um, a guy called Dixon, if mm -hmm. I remember... Um, he had a couple of phone shops mm -hmm. um, in Voi, Nakuru, Kisumu, and Nairobi. So he, I, I was basically the errand person. So he'd mm -hmm. send me downtown to where the the wholesalers mm -hmm. sell the electronics and phones, and then I'd send them to the various shops. So mm -hmm. I thought I'd I could survive mm -hmm. on six Gs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how much I, was your rent? I mean, because you said you've gotten a house now. No, I, I went to live with my friend. Okay. Yeah, so my friend hosts me. Um, and same month when I move in, mm -hmm. I, I lose my job. My six... Your 6K job. My 6K job. Yeah. Um, and now I'm in panic because mm -hmm. I'm going back to the village mm -hmm. and I really don't want to go back to the village. <laughs> Why not back to your folks? I, I don't want to. I, I, I want to be independent. But if you're going back to the village, you're not being independent either. <laughs> well, I, I don't know how I was thinking. I, 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 did, I just... Forward. I was yeah. moving okay. forward, not backwards, okay. right? So I'm trying to figure out how I can move forward yeah. and not have to go back. Yeah. And I remember I had 100 bob. My last 100 shillings. Now, after that 100 bob, I'd have had to maybe even walk home. <laughs> this is like that... Uh, what's his name? The Rock Story. He, he had eight, was it $8 he had or something? I had anyway. 100 shillings. Yeah. Uh, we lived uh, in Umoja with my friend. Okay. And you know how the flats are. So basement, there is a cyber cafe, and any those days now. This is maybe 2009 or 8, thereabouts. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided, let me go to the cyber cafe downstairs. I log on Facebook. I talk to a few of my friends and tell them, hey, I'm looking for a job. Um, and maybe send a couple of CVs. Mm -hmm. My CV is a one pager, like I've not worked mm -hmm. <laughs> anywhere. Just, really. right. um, and so I go, and the second person I speak to, a, a friend of mine from home, she tells me, Oh, by the way, our accountant got fired last week. Mm -hmm. um, but my boss is kind of tough, so you just come, don't tell him I told you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Send me the location. Mm -hmm. So he's, she sends me the location and I, I show up. I, I look for an outfit that is official-ish. <laughs> I didn't have any other time. And I show up yeah. uh, to, to their office and I introduce myself. Uh, this is what I've done. I have a CPAK and blah, 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 blah. And he gave me the job. <laughs> 30 Gs. What, what, what do you think? I mean, what, were they... Um, from what you said, if your friend's saying that he's a tough boss, what do you think is it, um, made him give you the job? Is that they were in like dire strains of an accountant on that day? Because if mm. you're just starting out, yeah. Let me tell you, this has, this has happened to me now that I'm an employer. Okay. Uh, sometimes you have a, uh, an open position mm -hmm. uh, that you're looking to fill, and then someone just walks in and just they're exactly the person you're looking for. So why mm -hmm. waste time looking for someone else? Yeah. And I think that's the lesson I learned there. Okay. Yeah. So I get the job. 30,000 was a lot of money. Yeah, from, from six, that's like... <laughs> from six? Yeah. <laughs> and now I can afford rent, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I move out, um, find my own place, and I start life. Okay. Um, I, and now I started rising the ranks. It was a small company, so I moved companies um, and moved, changed roles. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Who, who invested into you... Um, getting your CPA? 
Is he being kid at that? Sorry. What do you mean invest? Like who paid for it? My dad. Yeah. Okay. So he paid for for mm. all of that. Yeah. Um, at, at that point, I'd like to ask, and I guess if, if it's a place that you're not going to go willing to go, it's fine. I'm just wondering the difference between, I guess, when you were living with your parents, why you had to move around and whether and whether and what impact that potentially had mm. on you, especially in a monetary um, understanding. Mm. I see. Wow, I didn't think we were gonna go there. Today. No, so not not necessarily like existential <laughs> per se, but like on this money journey. Element. Okay. So, I mean, when you're in the village, it's village life, mm. right? So, I don't know. We are picking coffee. Um, we're going to the shamba here and there. Um, we're not lacking food, mm -hmm. but you know. We're not living soft life either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I would say it was. Okay. But in terms of fees, I can't say I ever lacked school fees. Mm. No. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I guess now you've, you've, you are now, you finished your first job and you're moving on to, to yeah. better and better jobs. What is it that's, that's, um, that's driving you to get or, or to move up the ranks? Is it the money that you're being offered? Is it a challenge so, that you're looking for? I worked for that guy for about two years, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to go back to school and do my degree, mm -hmm. right? And he, he was a bit hesitant. He didn't want to allow me to grow in that sense. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I realized I, this is not a long-term... I, I need to figure out, you know, my next move. Um, and another friend mm -hmm. calls me up and to, tells me we have this position because I'm sharing um, that I'm looking for a job. I'm sharing with my friends. Um, and I get called for a credit control position. Mm. I had never done credit control. Um, I mean, I've, I've just been a basic accountant at, mm -hmm. up, up to this point. Mm -hmm. um, but, I'm, but she tells me, you know what, I'll, I'll slot you in for the interview. You just go jitter. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, and I'm just like, sure, why not? So I go for the interview, and I remember the final interview. We were two ladies, myself and another um, lady. We had almost exact same... Um, quali qualifications in terms of academic mm -hmm. um, but she had worked in an insurance company before which mm -hmm. is and this company was more of like a hospital mm -hmm. so kind of related ish mm -hmm. um, I would say she had better a better chance at getting mm -hmm. the job than I did mm -hmm. but the last interviewer was the CEO and mm -hmm. we have been shortlisted the two of us mm -hmm. um, and later on so I get the job and later on I asked my boss why he chose me and he told me I was just confident and I looked like I can, I can, I can collect some debts yeah. <laughs> for okay. them. So that's how I get my next role. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Did you meet this? Did you meet the lady? The other person who you shortlisted? Yes. With? Yes. She was given a different position. They in didn't, the company? Yes, in the company. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I wanted to ask you, because I've, I've never been in a space where I guess like I've been shortlisted with anyone else. I've never really oh. been employed. Yeah. And we so ended I've always up wondered like... Difference. Oh, I always wondered, like, how do you feel <laughs> when you get the job and then <laughs> the other person doesn't? I, I don't know. I guess you just learn from it. Yeah. Yeah. You learn, you know, what could I have done better and stuff. Yeah. There, there are many no's as you go through life that you yeah. want to get. So you can't let it put you down. Yeah. Yeah. Just learn why you didn't get the job and then make sure you're prepared well for the next one. Okay. Yeah. So what's the pay like at, uh, at, at, at this credit control? I think it was... It doubled. It doubled. Yeah. So for the two years that you're at the, at the, um, at the as, 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 as you said, a basic accountant, mm. the, your pay doesn't change. It's more it or less the same. It changed to, I think, 40. Yeah. Yeah. Like a bit of an increment. Yeah, a okay. bit of an increment. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what's then your, your, I guess, your continued career pursuit to the point where so, you get to this unknown, yeah. unnamed <laughs> firm? Yeah. So credit control was fun. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, what, what, what does it entail? Just talking to people and convincing them to pay your, their debts earlier. So it's a hospital. Mm -hmm. We serve mostly, um, insurance patients. Mm -hmm. So you, they, the, you serve the patient, you get paid by the insurance company. Mm -hmm. So it's just basically making sure that we are paid faster, mm -hmm. sooner than later. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I made very many friends. Mm -hmm. um, I started, I remember when I started, I couldn't even, I didn't know what to say when I call it. Mm -hmm. Like, do I start, start with a hello or mm -hmm. like, when can I come for my check? Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. didn't, 
I was completely clueless, mm-hmm. but somehow I figured it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I became really, really good at it. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it also offered a bit of flexibility. Mm-hmm. You could be out in the field. Mm-hmm. Um, or going to as long as money. you're meeting your target, <laughs> right. then you know everything is. What good. would be your target like for something like that? Because essentially you're a debt collector. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Basically, mm-hmm. um, uh, it, it depends on how much is owed mm-hmm. in terms of because you age your debtors, mm-hmm. so they some insurance companies maybe are on a sixty day, mm-hmm. so you need to figure out what that figure is and make sure you collect about ninety percent of it. Okay. Gosh, okay. In yeah. your in your experience in that, I guess, what do you think is the trick to getting people to pay early? Um, or what do you need to do to make sure to, to get people to consider paying early? So so basically, um, because it's a farm, right? Mm-hmm. It's not it's not Barack or mm-hmm. Anne. It would be hard if I'm collecting money from you personally. Mm-hmm. But this is these are big organizations. So mm-hmm. you just you need to figure out who makes what decision within the company and just become buddies with them. It's so basically purely... go out, buy them coffee. When you're coming to see them, uh, don't just come to asking for money. Just, mm-hmm. you know, I come by and I just say, hi, Barack, and I bring you maybe a cup of coffee or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. Just find ways to be pals. Mm-hmm. So they, you're always top of mind. So they're always prioritizing your checks. Wow. That's how I did so it. So it's just networking, It's networking, basically. basically. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and your target is you're trying to collect about 90% of, mm, mm, of yeah. whatever, whatever yeah. is owed yeah. by that time. All right. How long, so how long are you a debt collector for? Uh, how long? Maybe two years. Mm-hmm. Can't, can't remember. I think two years. So I do credit control, then I'm promoted. So the company is growing bigger mm-hmm. and bigger. So they are, I, I was lucky in that sense. So mm-hmm. there are more open positions for you to um, you know, apply. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and so I grew from credit control mm-hmm. to management accountant and then to chief accountant. Mm-hmm. And then now from there, that's when I changed jobs, like from working from that company to another one. Okay. Yeah. And is this, is this when you go back into accounting or? Um, yes. It's still, I, it was a finance manager role. Okay. Yeah. So there's an interesting story maybe I want to share. Okay. The transition between uh, the hospital and... Um, uh, this other company, we were doing beer distribution. Beer distribution. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the transition there in between, I remember when I was working for the hospital, when I got the chief accountant role. Yeah. Um, so the, the setup was the, the entire time I'd been working at the head office. Mm-hmm. And now I got transferred to the hospital is, itself as a chief accountant. Um, and at this point, automation is a thing. So they are starting to buy, uh, companies are starting to onboard software solutions to just help with um, processes and just make work more efficient. Mm. Um, And they had just bought a hospital management solution. Um, And it was like, the project had, they they had already gone live, but it had a couple of hitches and issues here and there. And so one of my roles and tasks was to make sure that the hospital management system works, Mm -hmm. right? So obviously I get introduced to the uh, solution providers um, and I start to just look at all the workflows and how they are sort of integrating and interacting Mm -hmm. with each other. Mm -hmm. So let me paint a picture. When you go to a hospital, first question they'll ask you is, are you insured or are you Mm -hmm. cash? Mm -hmm. So that's a workflow. Then if you're cash, what happens? If you're insurance, you're what happens? Right. Um, then you go, you're queued to see the doctor. So there's a queue. So the doctor can also see, I have 10 more patients waiting. When you go see the doctor, the doctor might send you to the lab. Um, the lab results need to be communicated back, back to the doctor. Then the doctor will give you either medication or maybe now um, uh, sort of like um, onboard you as like sort of admit, admit you yeah. yeah as an inpatient whatever the case may be so that's our workflow and everything remember i'm the chief accountant so mm-hmm. the, there's a money aspect to each and every one of those mm-hmm. processes right mm-hmm. uh, and so they all sort of needed to work together um there are a couple of hitches here and there um especially when it came to inpatients uh because you have a couple of doctors that are coming to serve one patient mm-hmm. um and they all need to bill they bill you, you bill the patient. Um, and sometimes the math was getting lost. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And so I I was really hard on those solution providers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they they we, we didn't have a good relationship mm-hmm. because you know I I I wanted my work to be easier, mm-hmm. and the only way I could get my work to be easier is by getting this thing to work. Yeah. Um. And so when I when I leave, and they heard that I left, mm-hmm. um, the guy called me, mm-hmm. and we heard that you left, and I'm like, yeah yeah yeah, where are you going? Blah blah blah. And then he calls me in for a meeting. Mm. And I go and he tells me, forget, you know, the relationship we've had mm. <laughs> up to this point. Mm. But we really feel like you understand our system really, really well. Mm. And you understand the gaps that exist. And because we are working on the next version, we would like to address those gaps. So mm. can you work with us? Um, how, how, how much time do you have? I had about a month mm. before reporting to to like my new role. Mm-hmm. And so I got this consultancy gig in mm-hmm. between. Mm-hmm. And it didn't it didn't click. So I I, I did my consultancy and then moved mm-hmm. to my next role. Mm-hmm. Um and now this is when I, I have this bad experience mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and I resign yeah. without notice. Mm. Without plan. And that was you had worked there for if I remember correctly said 6 6 months. No, uh, six months it was six good, months, then it starts going down. Yes. Then, yeah. It was about I, I think ten. Ten months. Ten months. Just under a year. Ah, it's when now you Yeah, just saying. under a year. So um so I I leave employment and now I'm thinking, what am I gonna do? I need to pay bills. Question on mm-hmm. the, the consultancy bit. How did you charge them? What 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 basis did you use to like what justification <laughs> did you use to tell them this is what you're gonna pay me and this is how much you're gonna pay me for this month? So of honest, I knowing what I don't know, I ought to have charged like five times. <laughs> what I did you charge? <laughs> we have no shame. We have no 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 shame here. Uh, it was uh, two hundred thousand. Yeah. Um and it was two weeks worth mm-hmm. of work. Uh, not bad, yeah. but the value I give them, they made so much money. Yeah. They, they they even call me for a drink. They're like, and come, we want, we need to buy you a drink because <laughs> yeah. the amount of money we've made yeah. on this new version, yeah. um, you really helped us. So, yeah. I mean, we're good friends to date. No Know- regrets. Uh, sorry. And the, you just said, based on what you said, knowing what you know now, you'd have charged a million yeah. for that. Are you able to quantify that for me and explain to me why why it was worth a million and not 200,000 value it's it, for me i charged it from how much work it would require me in terms of time mm-hmm. not how much value they were going to get they were going to get mm-hmm. from me do you think if you'd have told them that you're going to charge them a million they would have accepted that initially um Knowing again what I know now, mm-hmm. I I I'd, I'd have found a way to package it mm-hmm. in a way that it looks and feels like a million shillings worth worth of value that you yeah, can yeah yeah okay but uh, I didn't know I didn't know so I I charged according to maybe how much time it was gonna take me to get to give them what they wanted okay yeah. All right, so now you say you're done with the employment. Actually, before you, before that, because um, now you're talking about leaving the traditional accounting space. Mm-hmm. I want to ask a bit about, I guess, people who've been in professional spaces. I try and find out what are the pay skills and um, uh, career growth path that a person with a CPEK would, ex- would be expected to, to have. Mm. And what would they be hoping to make, I guess, if they're... Going to get I'm, to I'm still on the same path. Yeah. It's, it's just that I'm not an accountant, but okay. really my job entails making sure that the investment is secure, which is really okay. what accountants do. Yeah. It's just that more of, um, I've, I've sort of focused on the software angle, okay. not the, the bookkeeping okay. uh, part of it. So I would say somehow I found a way to spin it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I'll take you on a journey just to see how, how that happened. Okay. Yeah. So so I quit my job. Uh, I'm looking for small money just to pay my bills. My rent is not even on my mind right now. Mm-hmm. I'm just I need to fill my car. I need to move around. I need to pay the, my so electricity the and stuff. Like I'll pay in three the months. landlord. I'll handle. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm thinking at this point. Like I could just to, to, to deal my nothing in the savings account at this point. Um, can I be honest? Yeah. I had nothing Zero. apart from. The pay I got, yeah. Um, obviously, I didn't spend month, yeah. the, the 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 month before, yeah. you know, 
the way I used to. Yeah. <laughs> and now my final check, I actually did not have any savings. Okay, so you are hand, you are living hand to mouth even with a with a salary. <laughs> with a salary. Yeah. Okay. It was bad. It's it's one of those things I'm not proud of, mm-hmm. but um I'm I'm glad I made those mistakes then. Imagine if I were living that life today. So what's what's the and this I'm I'm curious, what's the conscious thinking of living like that? If you can put yourself back in that mind where you're spending everything that you're making, like what What's your mindset? You know, when you're employed, you never, you never see, you never think that you know this job could, you could lose this job tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It's not something that is conscious mm-hmm. on your mind. So there'll always be. Yeah, always... I had never lost a job until that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's not something I thought would happen. Mm-hmm. And if you've seen how I've like, in terms of like how I got the new jobs, mm-hmm. it wasn't that hard. <laughs> Uh, right? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I guess it wasn't like tamaking. Yeah, and, yeah and, it wasn't like tamaking, yeah, tamaking yeah, kind of. Yeah. Um, but this was different because mm-hmm. I, I felt caged. Mm-hmm. Th- that experience made me feel like someone else is in charge of my life. Like in the plug or unplug when mm-hmm. they want. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I can't, that's not something I want going forward. Mm-hmm. I want to be in charge. Okay. Right? So when I'm leaving that job, I'm not leaving to go look for another job. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, I need to figure this thing out. Okay. Right? Okay. So that, that's why it was different. And that's why I'm looking for other ways to, other small businesses to sort of give me a bit of income. Mm-hmm. Because I, I didn't want to look for a job. Okay. Yeah. So what are you offering small businesses? I don't know. So now this is how, like, I'm trying to figure it out. Okay. I've been an accountant my whole life. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, different roles, but an, an accountant nonetheless. So I'm thinking uh, bookkeeping. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to sell. Mm-hmm. I've never sold anything. Mm-hmm. Basically, we are the people when you go to a boardroom meeting, you're the last to speak and everyone is just exhausted from all the figures you're showing them. Mm-hmm. No one is paying attention. Mm-hmm. That's the most I've done in mm-hmm. terms of like interacting with other people and right. telling them about stuff. Right. I had never sold any product. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was my that was my biggest challenge. Um, but even at this point, I'm not I'm not even thinking about because I'm I'm thinking this is gonna be a journey. Even mm-hmm. if I choose whatever product I choose is gonna be a journey, and I need quick money. Yeah. Right. So I I got a motorbike. Mm-hmm. You um, bought a motorbike. Yes. Okay. From the money I had, I got a motorbike. Okay. I called a company. Well, it wasn't registered. It was just a business name on mm-hmm. Facebook. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think white express errands, mm-hmm. something like that. And I was going to like offer errands. So I get a rider, um, get parcel deliveries here and there. And so I, I pretend, printed some flyers and I started like going to different offices in the CBD, mm-hmm. telling them this is what I do, this is what we do. If you want your parcels delivered, whatever, you can give us a call. Yeah. That was humbling. Mm-hmm. Uh, from a finance manager from, uh, to <laughs> working gib- with flyers. Yeah. How so many clients did you get from that? One. How many flyers do you think you you gave out? Eventually, I threw them away. I didn't. I, di- I didn't finish my stash. <laughs> <laughs> how many? Did, uh, like how many? That, it was one stash. out of. It was like one out of how many? Um, I I don't have the numbers, mm-hmm. but but basically, what what happened is I I did I I, I did this walking around for like a month. It's not a short time. No, it, it's, yeah. For like a month, just handing uh, flyers around. Um, one law firm used to send us for errands and stuff, mm-hmm. but, but they were the only consistent mm-hmm. guys who would like mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. order for like yeah. this service. But then as I'm doing that, uh, one morning I'm scrolling on Instagram and I don't know who's the, that some lady I follow was talking about uh, these guys who she uses to send parcels. Mm-hmm. Sandy. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. So I go to their website and I learn about, you know, what they do. I visit their offices. There was someone on Gong Road mm-hmm. at the time. And they signed my bike up. And now I have, I don't need to sell. Now I have, they, they, they are doing, doing, the the, doing the selling. And we just need to sort of execute the instructions. So that's how that happened. Okay. And how much then are Sandy giving you? Um, About 15000 a week. A week. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's a lot of... Not bad, because not in one week you've yeah. paid your rider, you've fueled the bike, yeah. and now you have 
you, you start cross, crossing into profit. Yeah. So so then you're able to pay for small small bills. Obviously, it comes with a lot of hassle. Managing riders is another. Ma- it's yeah. Just, altogether. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so that's how I survive that season. And so even in that period, are you? Is it still hand to mouth, so to speak? Do you move houses? Do you go to somewhere where it's cheaper? Or your ego is not taking that at the moment? No, I do not move houses. Uh-huh. Why didn't I move houses? <laughs> <laughs> so you don't try to reduce your expenses, really? I did, except the rent. <laughs> <laughs> what was your largest expense? Uh, rent. <laughs> it's dumb, eh? Wow. wow. Yeah, so I did, I did, move, I did move houses. Um, what do you think? Why do you think that 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 was like? Why why reduce everything else but the house and, and the rent? I don't know. I felt like I would. I I I, I was gonna figure it out. That's but you reduced felt. everything else. Yeah. What did the house mean to you? Do you think that you were like, you know what, this one I'm not I'm not going to let. No, re- no it wasn't an, an an like an attachment mm-hmm. to either the neighborhood or the house mm-hmm. or the location. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's I just didn't consider it. It didn't it didn't cross my mind. I don't oh. think it did. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So anyway, so I now I have 15k per week locked, mm-hmm. right? So at least we can move around. Yeah. Now I'm able to sort of think, okay, so how do I move from here? I've always been an accountant, so the only other thing I know to do is accounting. That's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Um and I start talking to people, attending um networking events there's a there's a there's a group called bni i think Mm -hmm. business networking something Mm -hmm. Uh, basically business people they come together every week to uh, share their businesses and give each other referrals so a friend tells me about it and she's like come come with me for the for this week's session so i go and from that session i get uh someone who was interested in bookkeeping Mm -hmm. services and I, he's like, I, you know, we could work on like a retainer. Mm-hmm. It was 30,000, I remember. Mm-hmm. A retainer of 30,000 and these are my deliverables. deliverables. Per month. Per month. Yeah. So over and above the kidogo I'm getting the, from the, the Bodana, I have this. Yeah. And then it hit me. I do not like being an accountant. Mm-hmm. I hated doing bookkeeping. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think... I was even good at it. This hadn't come clear to you um, with all the experience that you had as a as a as an accountant beforehand. Like it had never hit you that you don't enjoy this work. No, imagine not. Because remember, I did I did accounting for like my first real job. Mm-hmm. After that, it was you know not bookkeeping roles in finance, yeah. but not book not like. Payables and receivables. You know, actually, as you say that, let me tell you, I, I feel sorry for, for my for my accountant. And not not <laughs> and the reason why I do is because I'm terrible. Like I send my my receipts late. My the only thing that I do on time is pay her on time. But everything <laughs> else, like when she asked me for documents. In fact, today I was sending, I think it was my bank, um, a bank statement. I think she had asked me for it like two, three weeks ago. Mm. So yeah, I'm, so so, I, I'm I sorry didn't... to my account. <laughs> 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 if that's the experience that you had as well, I, I I I would see why you'd be like, no, this is not this is not for me. So I'm on this journey. It's it's almost like I'm discovering Anne. Mm-hmm. I I wasn't paying attention to who I am, what I like, you know, what I want tomorrow to look like. I was basically employed, happily employed. I show up at work. I do what I need to be. What ra- needs to be ra- done? Ra- yes, and then I get paid at the end of the month, and then next month we do it again. That's kind of how I was living. So now I'm I'm starting to discover things about myself that I actually like wasn't like aware of, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I do not like bookkeeping. And here I am, I'm offering a service and I actually don't enjoy the work. Mm-hmm. And I I knew I needed to f- to find something else. Mm-hmm. So anyway, when I get this client, let me back up mm-hmm. Kidogo. <laughs> when I get this client, now I know okay. I I had a Company name, but I not registered it. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I go and register, and I open my a bank account, mm-hmm. right? With a business name. Yes, it was in December. I remember. So my first check from that client came in in December, and I was just like, "And please, 
you can't go and spend it all over the holidays. Mm -hmm. So hold on to this check, mm -hmm. bank it in January. Mm -hmm. I forgot everything I learned during credit control. When you're paid today, you go and bank. <laughs> <laughs> you go and bank that check today immediately. Yeah. Um, because who knows what will happen between yeah. now and a week from now. Yeah. So when I when I eventually banked the check, it bounced. The case had the money was finished. Yeah, there, there was no money in that account. So my first, I would say, the company that I'm still working mm -hmm. on, Linity Dynamics Africa, mm -hmm. my first check bounced. Um, and now I realized, okay, I don't like accounting and bookkeeping, and also the market that I am trying to serve. Um, they, they, they are also businesses that are struggling. So mm -hmm. we are two struggling people. <laughs> You're not going to help each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? We are two struggling people. So this is not going to work. Yeah. Um, and at that point, I panic. Mm -hmm. And you didn't call the guy and be like, Sasa, you know the check bounce. Like, can you I send did. me another I one? Did, did. The guy paid me like three months later. Uh -huh. So it wasn't going to work. Yeah. At this point, I'm panicking and I'm thinking, maybe I should look for a job. <laughs> maybe I should look for a job. Um, and a certain recruiter that I had met while mm -hmm. working um, in my previous years mm -hmm. uh, was looking for a group finance manager for a role somewhere. So she calls me. She's like, Anna, you sure you don't want to take this one up? I mean, I, I could schedule the interview. I'm like, please do. So I go back to employment. Um, before going back to employment, mm -hmm. now that I'm, I'm thinking bookkeeping is not working, mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. So mm -hmm. what else can I do? I'm thinking project manager because mm -hmm. I had been involved in those um, in the automation projects mm -hmm. for a couple of solutions. Even the, my last job, mm -hmm. um, I was part of the team that were implementing ERP, mm -hmm. the ERP solution that we were using. Um, and so I'm thinking, um, you have the solution provider and the customer who's buying the solution, but somehow uh, this guy does not deliver what he promised and sometimes also the person buying the solution is not like committing fully to the process. Mm -hmm. And so the project fails. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking I could do that. Um, and the more people I'm talking to about it, I realize not enough people have been burnt, like mm -hmm. tried that and, and now they, they actually see it, this service as valuable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they're wondering, if mm -hmm. I'm buying a solution from Barack, mm -hmm. Barack should manage himself and yeah. his team to mm -hmm. make sure that they deliver what, yeah. what we require. Yeah. So it wasn't, the market wasn't ready. Maybe now it is. Mm -hmm. Then I felt like it wasn't, or maybe I gave up too soon. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So I go back to employment. Um, and the company that, I now, that I'm now working for is in marketing, mm -hmm. uh, below the line marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, guys who do... Um, activations, the, mm -hmm. the activations you see in supermarkets mm -hmm. and bars and stuff. Yeah. And they had the same issue. They had bought a solution, a software to manage the business. Mm -hmm. uh, it had a few gaps mm -hmm. and they were sort of trying to fix. And I'm, in my head, I was just like, Anne, you give up too soon. Mm -hmm. This is what you should have done. Mm -hmm. um, didn't last long, maybe four months. In terms of what, what, what role was, what role were you? Group you FM. Have? No, what, what was your role? Group finance manager. Oh, sorry. Oh, my God. I was in a group. <laughs> are you okay? I was like, I was like, group I was like what's happening? Sorry. Okay. Group. So you're the so you're the group finance manager. Mm -hmm. Um, and where where I'm trying to figure out where your interaction with this, um, what you call it, with the system, with the tech system is is coming in. So, um, syst primarily businesses will uh, acquire software solutions to manage their business. Yeah. So it's either you want you don't want to lose your inventory, you don't want to lose your money, you want your billing done on time, yeah. and you want all those processes to be efficient yeah. and accurate, right? So uh, software and, and finance are like... In the same, intertwined. Yeah, okay. they're intertwined. Um, and so you find that most of those projects are headed by the finance team. Mm, okay. So the solution provider and finance are yeah. the ones to sort of make it work. Okay. Plus maybe other departments, mm -hmm. but, but those are the main ones. Um, and so I just tell myself, maybe I give up too soon. Um, and so I leave that company and now I'm like, now you're going and, to be an entrepreneur for real. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. We're going to do this. How, right. Sorry. How much are these guys paying you when you're coming back to employment? What's the offer to get you back in? 
Uh, same salary I was on when I left. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're looking for numbers. I'm looking for numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for numbers. Uh, it was two hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. Yeah. So. So anyway, I I I I just tell myself now you have you have to see this through. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the more I interacted with that service, the mm-hmm. project management, the mm-hmm. the more I realized actually why not sell software mm-hmm. and do better than the guys who are currently in the market like okay. offer a better service such that you don't need the customers who come to you don't need a project mm. manager mm. right mm. um and so somehow uh, the universe is interesting because when when you develop an interest in something i feel like it somehow finds a way to you mm-hmm. um and so we are having a drink with my friends and i meet this guy who works in a big software company mm-hmm. and I tell him about what I'm thinking and then he's like, you need to start that thing as soon as tomorrow. Come see me. Mm-hmm. So I go see him and he kind of helps me sort of navigate. Okay, where do I start? Which solution do I work with mm-hmm. and why? Right? Um, different solutions have different target markets. Mm-hmm. Uh, so which one are you picking and stuff? Mm-hmm. So we do that. He introduced me to a couple of tech uh, guys who can actually do the implementation. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I had already done like project management as a user, I could do the project management mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that was like yeah. what and quote my yeah. role. Yeah. And so I start selling software and I close my first deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was good money. Yeah. It, it was that. I, I, Sometimes, I don't know how, how entrepreneurship, it, it feels like it gives you just enough, just enough mm-hmm. to, to... To keep you invested. Yes, to keep you invested, mm-hmm. because that was really good. Um, and I remember thinking, wow, 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 wow. This is how people are making money in Nairobi. Hey, ay, 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 ay. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like, I made the right decision to mm-hmm. leave employment. Mm-hmm. Now look at me. And I'm driving around and I'm thinking, I'm going to own, I'll buy a house very in soon. this neighborhood very soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, I I closed the deal. The customer sends the deposit, and I was so anxious. I didn't touch that money for maybe like a month. You're just looking at it in the in the. We are working. Yeah, we are working, but I'm, I've I've not touched it because yeah. I am scared. This is my first deal. Mm-hmm. It's bigger than I thought. Mm-hmm. What if I can't deliver? Mm-hmm. What's gonna happen? Oh, you so know. you want to be able to pay them back? Yeah, if just in case. Goes south. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. Yeah. So anyway, the project is a success. The client is happy, pays the next deposit because you know projects are phased. Mm-hmm. And now the project is done. It, they've gone live. They're happy. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, How long does it take to complete the project? About three months. About three months. Yeah. Let me ask you in terms of categories. Are we talking? Uh, in the millions, one to three, three to five, five to three ten, to five. three to five. Okay. So yeah. yeah, I mean, if if you're out of, if you're just out of um, um, employment, so to speak, and yeah, that's your first deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's big. No, it's not. It's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. Definitely keep well, you it. It was big. Let yeah, me tell you, I I never thought I could sell any product to anyone, mm-hmm. live alone. You know. Uh, as, as a solution. That that you know yeah. in terms of a tech solution that, that was yeah, yeah yeah so I guess what it did to me or rather for me what yeah. it did for me it just it unlocked a, a certain mindset of mm-hmm. you can actually do this and you mm-hmm. can actually do this but then I did this without an office without employees minimum spend mm-hmm. right so my margins were good also mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and now I'm thinking. Back when I was employed, right? Mm-hmm. We have departments. Mm-hmm. These people deal with this sales department, project management, nini nini. So I'm like, we need to have departments. We need to get people in to come and help with A, B, C, and D, whatever we need to get done. We, wherever those people sit, we need an office. Uh, and in case uh, my future customers want to visit me, I mm-hmm. need to present, you know, we need to present a certain way. Yeah. So a nice location and stuff. I did not sell another deal for another year and a half. 
year and a half. Year and a half. That's a long time. That's a very long time. Yeah. So how are you? How are you? How are you surviving in this in this year and a half? And and then a question on the personal. When I say personal finance, I know it's your personal journey, but mm-hmm. like personal finances, savings, investments, has any change happened there? Are you now putting stuff aside for savings? Are you now investing in anything, or it's still? We're investing in the business. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. We're investing in the business. Yeah. So, um, a year goes by. Mm-hmm. And we are trying stuff. We are doing cold calls. We are, things are just not happening. Sometimes we come close. Um, the, the product I had chosen was um, an expensive solution. Mm-hmm. So first of all, your market is, the market it's in that small, big yeah. is small. Um, then second of all, I, I don't have a lot of reference sites that mm-hmm. I can, you know, tell my customers, if you go to this and this place, you can see how we've done um, the implementation and mm-hmm. the value we've given them, I don't have that. Mm-hmm. Third, I didn't know how to sell. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to sell. Instead of teaching myself how to sell, I, I didn't want to go through the hassle of hard work. Mm-hmm. So I hired someone to come mm-hmm. and do the selling mm-hmm. for me. And because I don't have a lot of money, it's not like I got the best in the market, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I, I got one that I got could afford. Your, what your money can afford, yeah. Yeah, so... So I live our rent, Salo. We are mm-hmm. still trying stuff, trying mm-hmm. stuff. Um, as I'm doing that, I let me take you back. Mm-hmm. The beer company. Mm-hmm. Um, my biggest challenge while I was working there, the beer distributor, not mm-hmm. a beer company, beer distributor. So while I, I was working there, our biggest challenge was distribution mm-hmm. and being able to track everything in distribution. Mm-hmm. So for example, um, 15 vehicles. Mm-hmm at the warehouse, loaded with uh, crates of beer. Let's say it's a 10 ton going to Mount Kenya mm-hmm. region. So how, how do I know who you sold to? Like, because it's a, it was a new beer in the market, mm-hmm. so we were doing sort of like um, recruiting mm-hmm. uh, traders to sell our beer. So some would buy on ca- in cash, some, most of them in consignment. You leave your stuff here. If I sell it, I'll pay you. Mm-hmm. So as an accountant, Tracking the inventory yeah. was a hassle, yeah. and it's inventory that's moving yeah. and you know being dropped in a hundred different places. Yeah. And so we were looking for an app that Something could do that distribution. Could, yeah. uh, so basically, we load the product, um, and you have access to what you have on your phone. And if you go to Barack, you sell to him, you do your transaction, print the ETR, whatever. Then on to the next one. But and back in the office, I'm able to see what movement exactly and happening. what is happening. Yeah. Um, so that's what we were looking for. We didn't. It we found on. a few guys who were doing it, but not to like they were not meeting the requirements we wanted. Mm-hmm. So when I left, I found myself talking to other distributors with the same issue. And so I call up my colleagues. I'm like, hey, what's up? Uh, did you finally find a solution? And they told me, yes, we did. This is the company that provided us with a solution. Mm-hmm. I holler at them and they're like, yeah, sure, we can work together. So now I um, have now two products, mm-hmm. the ERP and, and the, the distribution, distribution. app. Um, so <laughs> it was easier to sell that because the pain, the, the, it was addressing a real, a real pain, pain point, point yeah. right? So you're not, you're not, I'm not sitting down to introduce the pain to you Mm -hmm. and then I'll sell you the product. You Mm -hmm. already recognize you have an issue and Mm -hmm. I'm just giving you a solution. Mm -hmm. It was easier to sell. And I remember I got one of the big beer manufacturers in Kenya. Mm -hmm. They gave me an audience Mm -hmm. and we go for a presentation. um, And they say, yes, this looks like something we would be interested in. Mm -hmm. We want to do like a trial Mm -hmm. run in Western uh, Western Kenya, Eldoret, Rift Valley. Eldoret is in, in Rift Valley, right? Yeah, Rift but, Valley but and not Western. Western. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Rift Valley. Yeah. And they're like, come. You know, people from Central, once you pass Nakuru, it's like, <laughs> eh, it's not. It's not. Okay. It's, it's not. Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> As someone from Western Kenya, let me tell you. It is not. But anyway, yeah, please, please so, continue. <laughs> um, so they were like, come, we, we do a trial run. So it turns out this guy, yes, did develop a solution Mm -hmm. for that company I was working for before, but the architecture of of 
of the solution yeah. could not be could not have like multiple users. So you can't have company X, Y, and Z on the same platform. Mm -hmm. So you needed to rebuild. He couldn't white label it. No. What does white labeling mean? Whitely, I don't know the technical term of it, yeah. but essentially, it's taking, uh, I guess, an original product and being able to build off um, a copy of it that has similar characteristics, um, and then you can brand it in the way that mm -mm. this other new company requires. Is that not it? It is. Oh, but yeah. he couldn't. He oh, couldn't. Oh, he couldn't white label. And I was also, like, I thought I got the so that's block. what I meant yeah, was, yeah. that too, he couldn't do yeah, that, but what yeah. I meant was, like, uh, having multiple... Uh, pe people, yeah. Multi company, yeah, right, sort of kind of setup, yeah. So he didn't have that either. So, mm -hmm. um, he did not disclose that he couldn't do that. He didn't tell me, and he's gone for the pitch, the situation, the pitch with you. Yes, oh, I don't know what the hell he used to pitch, yeah, because he pitched and then he saw the solution. <laughs> <laughs> When the guy say Kujeni, yeah. I don't. I, I think he thought he had time between now when we pitched and, and, when, and when the customer makes the decision. Yeah. So they were like fast to, you know, call us in. Yeah. I'm calling him. He's not picking up. But I know his office. So after like it's we 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 are supposed to go to to the office to Eldred. Yeah. Uh, let's say next week. It was a Wednesday. Next week Wednesday, mm -hmm. and he's not picking up. Like mm -hmm. on Monday of this week. Mm -hmm. So by Wednesday, I'm anxious. Mm -hmm. I go to his office. I meet a couple of tech guys, developers. And then I'm asking them, where is this guy? Mm -hmm. And then they're like, um, an wacha tutu kwambi ukwili. <laughs> oh, no. Uh -huh. And please note, I am so desperate for mm -hmm. a sale because I'm not selling. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the one client who's given me audience and, and, and I've and seen an kuja yeah. and an opportunity. So, then that's when I realized, oh, my God. Yeah, dogs. What do I do? I'm going to look for another solution that does almost something similar. I'm going to look for another solution that does almost something similar, okay. if, if not exact same. I go on the internet. I meet so many people doing some... Something similar until I found one. And where are you searching? Close. Is it like Upwork and stuff like the that? The internet, just just the in, just. You're Google. just searching keywords. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and trying to just find someone who could deliver the same uh, sort of value that okay. you had sold to. I found one who was like maybe at best at best like sixty percent. Mm -hmm. There's a whole forty percent. That's, That's huge. Yeah. You're um, like barely halfway there. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm like. Knowing what I know now, I'd, I'd have easily called that meeting off. Mm. I'd have said, we're not it, ready. Give, a, yeah. give us more time. Mm. The end then was just a naive entrepreneur and also a broke entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So I want the money. I don't want to disappoint. And I still want to get paid, but I also want to offer value. Mm. And I'm, I'm not stopping to think, you know, like, what are you doing? And, yeah. You know, just calm down and think this through. Yeah. So anyway, we spend now with these new guys nights trying to get it get it right, at, at least closer to mm -hmm. 100, right? And I go to Eldoret. Mm -hmm. I go to Eldoret. They, they, they had, uh, we had given them some phone recommendations mm -hmm. uh, for the app to work efficiently. Some, they, they actually didn't have company phones. They had personal phones. Mm -hmm. So some didn't have space, mm. others didn't have, mm. I don't know what. So it, the, that whole training, because mm -hmm. it was supposed to be training, mm -hmm. and then now they start using it maybe mm -hmm. like them a month after. So the training didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, and my friend who sort of referred me there, uh, he was still, there. he was like, he worked for, for that company. Mm -hmm. He, I remember we had, we had dinner that evening and he told me, I, I think I know someone screwed you over. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You're onto something. Don't let them don't 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 let them kill your dream. Mm -hmm. I know you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. He didn't even ask. He didn't zusha mm -hmm. or anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know they're not paid. It was like trial, mm -hmm. but still it was a bit embarrassing, right? I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So I come back to Nairobi feeling so beat, mm -hmm. and I think what I have is there is there is a need in the market for this product. Mm -hmm. And that's that's sort of what I'm. St I, I 
sort of started building up yeah. on. Well, anyway, so now that was the beginning of my journey towards building my own your app. Own, <laughs> your own app. Okay. That and events. Sorry, question. What are the margins that you make um, as, as a tech, um, so as selling tech solutions? Like even for that opportunity, what, what, what were you potentially going to make? In terms of margins, about fifty, sixty percent. Okay, so it's it's fifty percent. Give it fifty percent. Yeah. yeah, so it's good. Yeah, it's still like relatively. If you stick to that model. Yeah. Yeah. So, but if you have rent and employees, then the the margins sort of shift. They shift a little. Yeah. Okay. So my journey towards building an app mm -hmm. starts now from that point. From that point. Completely clueless. There's a reason I call myself unprepared mm -hmm. to interpret it mm -hmm. because I go mm -hmm. with my gut mm -hmm. and then looking back, I'm just like, this I can't believe Anne, you thought you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> but also, it, it, I learned so much from, from just the whole experience. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, you know what? It wasn't, it wasn't a loss loss. There are, there are many lessons. Painful, but yeah. yeah. So the app. Does your money run out? The money that you... Yes. Yeah. Yes, the money runs out. Mm -hmm. I have to send um, guys home. I have to terminate. I dismantle the office furniture. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that was painful. I don't think I've ever... I've made many mistakes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've gone through shit and mm -hmm. stuff. But that hurt different. Mm -hmm. Because it felt like... Like I was just a failure. Mm -hmm. Like I had just failed at everything mm -hmm. <laughs> that's 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 the feeling i mm -hmm. had um and i guess that's also why it took so long to make that decision today and three months in i've already you know sort of looked at everything from a bird's eye view and i'm able to make a decision do i take a few steps back do i pause do i but then i guess you 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 you're hopeful yeah right because, I mean, this was more of like a windfall. Maybe another one is well, around the corner. To, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it's not, and you know. When does, assuming that now you get into, you know, savings and investments and I guess our money, uh, a better money culture, when does that kick in and what spa sparks that? What happens that then you're like, okay, I need to, I need to do this better? Ah, Barack. Recently. Mm -hmm. Many years later. Mm -hmm. This is... At this point, you're more on survival. Mm -hmm. You're trying to survive. Mm -hmm. So it's literally hand to mouth, hand to mouth. Um, and I would say I made some poor decisions where... It wasn't poor decisions. It's just, like I was saying, I was employed. So my perspective of mm -hmm. most of the things were mm -hmm. from that angle. Mm -hmm. I needed, there's a lot I needed to unlearn about the difference being between being employed mm -hmm. and actually being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So, so much. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like even up to date, I'm still learning, learning and unlearning and learning new things. So in terms of investment, I would say um, 2021. Okay. Yeah. And what was the thinking that, you know, made that happen? I, I got to a point and I'm like, um, I need to stop chasing or, or making decisions today with the hope mm -hmm. of a better tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? So, like, for example, the, um, the office thing, mm -hmm. I, I, there was nothing wrong with my model. Mm -hmm. My model was working. Mm -hmm. We delivered a good project. The customer is happy. Why are you changing it? Mm -hmm. It works. So every time I go about, okay, what else do I need? <coughs> I think my biggest lesson is is it, is it an ego thing? Because it felt good telling people the way, you know, you've been in business for two years and now you have an office and mm -hmm. employees and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, was, it was feeding my ego, mm -hmm. but it was really running me broke. Mm -hmm. It ran me broke, mm -hmm. actually. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so is, is this an ego thing? Is it a feel-good thing? Mm -hmm. Or is it the business demanding that decision? Mm -hmm. So every time I'm about to make a decision, I ask myself that. Mm -hmm. Even when I make money. Mm -hmm. So this, this, are, this, this is something I ask myself both mm -hmm. when I'm broke and when I have money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting question I want to ask you. Who do you think taught you about money? 
who taught me about money? Yeah. I was not taught about money. You were not taught about money? No. Nobody taught you about money. So where did you learn where did you learn about money? I mean you 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 talked about seeing, you know, your your neighbors eating sausages and you guys not you not eating sausages. Mm-hmm. Um is that how you then like learned about money? And I I have I have a, a, an end point here. My question is Yeah. Um do you think that if you had um grown up in a, a traditional home and traditional home you know the, the nuclear family of 844 father mm-hmm. and mother mm-hmm. do you think that based on who your parents are you would have had a better um understanding of of money um or you'd have had a more direct lesson on on money so to speak and maybe would have impacted some of your decisions differently in like a I don't know. Our our parents, I don't know if it's the same with you. Mm-hmm. They are very close to with this conversation about money. Mm-hmm. Um it's not until recently that I learned uh when I was helping my mom file her taxes mm-hmm. um how much she 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 was earning mm-hmm. and it shocked me. I'm like how how the hell do you survive? Mm-hmm. This is seriously this is your picture. <laughs> 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 like oh my god you get so so first of all we i i don't even know I, for a long time yeah. we didn't know how much she earns yeah. but you know somehow we we get by mm-hmm. um and it it it's even when i started the, the when i when i just told her i'm going to do entrepreneurship mm-hmm. how she interpreted it as uh i'm jobless she she told me i, I was jobless sev- several times <laughs> <laughs> like she stopped just juicy to alikuwa anasema an unajua hana kazi like mom i work for myself i'm not able to pay myself yeah. yet yeah. <laughs> but i but you know i'm not jobless yeah uh, but that's how she's viewing it mm. um when it comes to my dad it's not it's not clear mm-hmm. how he makes money <laughs> what do you mean I no i'm telling you <laughs> You see like the way you say like like say today for example my daughter right <coughs> excuse me yeah i have a 3 year old daughter right okay. so after a while she she can she can you know join the dots this is how yeah so my my both parents are civil servants yeah um yes we've sort of like survived you know hand to mouth basically but in terms of like this is the investments i'm making and these are the decisions i'm making and this is like the thought process mm-hmm. and this is where i you know i am um i'm headed mm-hmm. and this is how this is the plan of how i mm-hmm. get there no it's not clear no there are no conversation like i can't i can't remember having any conversation now that i'm ent- an entrepreneur there is no one at home i know who is an entrepreneur or has tried literally any business mm-hmm. i am I, i i can't even go for advice because my mom this, is calling this, me jobless <laughs> <laughs> okay. So everything I'm doing right now is crazy That's to crazy. her. Okay. Yeah. Um I have two final questions. One, which because you sort of answered in a story form, but I want to see if you can get like a direct answer mm. in terms of like pay scales and job growth as a CPA K. Like what um what would someone be expecting is me immediately or done and as you grow up the ranks, like what are you looking what would you potentially be looking at? Okay. So you're looking at um maybe starting off entry level mm-hmm. unpaid internships mm-hmm. if i'm being honest mm-hmm. uh, because what you learn from there then comes in handy unpaid uh, the ones where they're not even giving you bus fare um it depends on how you look at it mm-hmm. um if it's a if it's an environment that's going to uh, upskill you then they i mean that's value right mm-hmm. um I'd rather you you give me that than pay me bus fare and you're not really helping mm-hmm. me upskill. Okay. And it goes all the I mean there are people who are getting what seven figures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And anywhere in between. Anywhere there in between. Yeah. Okay. Final question. Um entrepreneurship or employment? Absolutely entrepreneurship. Really? Why would you say yes, that? Really. Or what, what, why is that your answer? So I listened to a video the other day and mm-hmm. uh, the guy was saying um that believing in entrepreneurship is the highest form of self love. Mm-hmm. And I'm like that's some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> self love. <laughs> 
I feel harassed 24/7 like yeah. it's how is it self love and then he continued to explain mm-hmm. that believing in yourself like finding something that you want to do and believing you can actually do it mm-hmm. and going out there and putting yourself out there to actually actualize it mm-hmm. is the highest form of self love and i remember i i reflected on on that statement and I agree initially the first time I was just like huh mm. but I kind of agree because the journey I've taken as an entrepreneur has has it's like in terms of self growth as a pers- like a well-rounded person it's because I took this journey I think employment really puts you on some blindfolds mm-hmm. and you're not able to see the world mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I can explain it. I I I hear you. you get and it? I see it. Yeah, I hear you and I see you. I get I get I get what you're trying yeah, to say. Yeah. I hope the viewers um um <laughs> will too. Yeah. Um, last comment, last question. Maybe where people can find you. I know Collins was talking about because Collins is the one who's who recommends you and said he really likes your content. So people can find your content and your conversations and stuff. Yeah. So I my pages are unprepared to entrepreneur. I talk about my journey. I try to be as authentic and raw as possible. Just basically the my wins, my challenges, my struggles. Um, trying to figure out my way and navigate through entrepreneurship. Okay. Yeah. That was. That was a fun. That was a fun episode. I think that was a really fun episode. Um, can't wait to have the next person on set. Thank you so much for coming. We'll Thank see you, you guys on me. the next episode of Financially Incorrect. I am your host Barack. Remember to check out FX Pesa. Um, check out the links and stuff in the description box. See you next time. <laughs>